This episode of ResX is brought to you by SEGA, the Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority. Welcome to ResX, an Indigenous lifestyle show for everyone. I'm your host, Erin Goodpipe, and today we have an extra spe special guest host, Cadmus. You might have seen him uh, on Parliament. Uh, you might have seen him kissing babies, <laughs> shaking hands with mushrooms. <laughs> Cadmus. Hugging cocoa. Yeah. <laughs> well, you want to tell us a little bit about what it's like to be chief now? <laughs> Good to be back. I know, it's, I know. It's really good to good to be co-host again. I know, I know. You know, uh, being chief is uh, it has many different positions, but ultimately it's uh, about good good communication yeah. and being out there in the public, and mm -hmm. that's something we've done with ResX. So I took what we le learned here and I just nice, use it in my nice. new role. That's great. Yeah. So you having, is there anything crazy that's come up or something just totally ridiculous or? Uh, you know, you get the odd phone call. Uh, asking for some pretty crazy requests yeah. and uh, you got to keep a straight face. Yeah. <laughs> the chief hotline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but overall it's, it's, uh, it's busier than you think. It, it, it's mm. definitely busy and I gained a few pounds. Yeah, oh, wait, wait, know, wait but, stand to but, the side. But, but round is a shape, so I'm still in shape. <laughs> Getting good back here too, here. It's kind of going from the keep back to the front. Keep it a balanced lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and God. you, engaged? I'm, yes, I am. I'm getting married soon. You didn't RSVP. What's going on? <laughs> we is were it because my salary increased a little bit? You <laughs> yeah. want me to I come? I expect a good uh, <laughs> wedding gift. You know? Okay, all right. Okay. Well, dollar store, you name it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These chief benefits, the smiles looking extra. Oh, yeah, I got the INAG benefit up. Glasses, you get one more level oh over. God. Yeah, you don't just get the IMAX <laughs> specials. <laughs> oh my God. So I watched your speech. Well, I watched a couple of them. They were really good. And I was just wondering, um, uh, how was that journey for you, you know, to, to becoming chief? And was it surprising? You know, you have to, um, you, you have to look at a challenge and turn it into an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my nose would grow on my speeches <laughs> once in a while, but Push you know, I, I kept it cadmus. I showed them my heart before I asked for their hand. Mm. You know, and I showed them my INAC teeth all the time. <laughs> you but, blinded them but, with uh, the teeth. <laughs> and I use these a lot. You mm -hmm. know, you use your best friends more than your worst enemies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, I'll the Elder in I'll the making, it. never mind. I got six gray hairs now, so <laughs> <laughs> in training. Holy. And that braid. Oh. Ah, a little long, you know, those cows and herbs and berries. <laughs> That'll keep it tight. From all the cocoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it's good to be back. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm really excited to be on a uh, part of the the last episode of yeah. season two. It's been a really good season, yeah. even though I know I've been a little bit lonely for you, kind of talking to myself and yes. stuff. But really, really good. Good. Well, let's it. get the show going. Let's do it. So first up, our first story is, uh, as you know, our sponsor is the Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority. You know them as SEGA. Um, let's check out some of the events that they are hosting as uh, part of their sponsorship in the community. Let's get going. We have people who come to us and they don't know where to turn. We're able to share a meal, a cup of coffee with them and talk about opportunity. On average, we assist approximately 15,000 citizens per year. And SEGA has helped create that both on and off reserve. When one of us succeeds, we all succeed. And that is what makes SEGA special. Fred Sasakimus is known as the first Aboriginal hockey player in the NHL, but he also hosts an Aboriginal youth camp in the summer at the University of Regina. Let's see what the kids learn. My name is Jennifer Love Green, and I'm the coordinator for the Fred Sasakimus Aboriginal Youth Leadership and Wellness Program. My name is Jolie Sasakimus, and I'm the coordinator of the Health Advocacy and Research Training Program. Our big goal for the program is to um, empower the youth to use, you know, recreation and sport opportunities to help uh, them be leaders in their community. Our hope is that they can take a combination of all their experiences, both in the gyms and and doing assessments of their community, and go back and 
and implement some programming in their community that will help the young people be healthy and active. One of the things that kids have been telling us all along is that they have a lack of role models in their own communities and in the wider, broader community. And so Fred has been an instrumental player in organizing youth in sport and recreation. And he has been um, a key player in just getting his name out there for youth. And so while he's older now, he's in his 80s, I think he's still very committed to youth in general and very um, optimistic that youth have opportunities to play sports. Well, I don't know much about his backstory, but it is inspiring just to be like the first Aboriginal in a sport. Like that, personally, I find pretty cool. Throughout the last five years, the youth have told us that they want more culture in the camp, that they, they've driven the way that we've changed this program. So they have identified where they need resources and where they need skill building. And then in the end, youth actually have a voice and a say in how the program is shaped. But also they tell us what they need in their own communities and we try our best to provide it. Empowering the youth um, is really a foundational element of the program and has been since the beginning. Um, we've intentionally kept the program very small. Uh, keeping it small allows us to in interact with the youth in a very meaningful way. Empower them with the, with the tools. Give them the tools so that they feel that they've got the resources to go back into their community and be change makers. Um, well, so far it's been really fun. There's been lots of different activities planned and lots of different people coming to teach and show different sports and activities. It's been really fun and I'm glad I came. Last week I had the opportunity to host National Aboriginal Day alongside my fiance Ben Ironstan which showcased multiple Indigenous artists. Aaron Starr covered the event showing all of the celebrations. Hey guys, happy National Aboriginal Day. We're here celebrating at the Artful Dodger where there's an event hosted um, by the Saskatchewan Writers Guild and the Sagewawak Artists Collective. There were awesome, awesome artists here performing. Some of them included... Uh, we had Kerry Osoup and Jay Brass, uh, partner duo musicians. Great performance. Yeah. We also had the Snake Oil Salesman. Uh, they just finished up. That was awesome, hey? Yeah. Uh, and we had an awesome time emceeing and like super good, awesome tacos, Indian tacos, of course and they switched it up. I think they even had a vegetarian option, so real modern Indians going on here, and we have lots of friends and family, so happy National Aboriginal Day from Res X. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Nikita Longman. I'm the Indigenous Program Coordinator with the Saskatchewan Writers Guild. I am Adam Martin and I am Executive Director of Sige Rewak First Nations Artist Collective. Today, Adam and I decided to uh, partner together uh, with the Artful Dodger to celebrate National Aboriginal Day. We wanted to complement a lot of the things that happened during the day and make sure we had some entertainment at the night time as well. Thank you for all of you for coming out and supporting our Indigenous artists. It's such an awesome day to be Well, I think um, for Adam and I working both in the nonprofit um, organizations, especially alongside artists, it's really important to uh, focus on the Indigenous artists that we have, be that poets, uh, writers, uh, band members, um, singer-songwriters, that kind of thing. So it was our opportunity to uh, really focus on those guys and celebrate their, their performances this evening. For me, it was... Uh to really get some exposure for our contemporary artists that aren't, um, you know, uh, dancers or singers. Those are really popular go-to uh, artists for such a day. But it's a, I think it's important to have the, uh, like we said, like the, the, the other genres covered. Yeah, our first guest tonight uh, I'd like to introduce is Knight Kamistano. The press asked us how long we planned to camp in front of INAC. We said since the Indian Act was here for 140 years, we are prepared to camp that long. So my friend Nikita Longman invited me to this uh, National Aboriginal Day Storytelling Show event. It's encouraging for me because I am an Indigenous woman. And just pretty much on a regular place. I've had a few stuff published in magazines. Um, I've had essays, an essay published in a magazine, and I'm having a, a poem published in a book. 
So I think um, an important part of uh, National Aboriginal Day is to focus on storytelling and keeping that oral tradition alive. That's why we decided to put the spotlight on, on the storytellers and the poets and the singer-songwriters and that kind of thing to give them a little bit of the spotlight as well to keep that, those traditions alive. Thank you, ResX, for coming out today, and thank you to Aaron and Ben for hosting. Yeah, well, ResX. Don't go too far. We'll be right back with more ResX. With me today is Brenda Condra of the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. The Duke of Edinburgh's award program is a self-development program for young adults aged 14 to 24 years old. The participants have to do a number of components. They have to do service to the community, some physical rec activities. They pick a skill that they'd like to get better at and an adventurous journey. Our Community Youth Challenge project, we have targeted our northern Aboriginal and remote isolated communities so that we can bring the program to those in the northern part of our province. Brenda, on behalf of the Access Children's Fund, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to now present you this check for $10,000. Thank you very much. So on behalf of the board, the staff, and the participants, we really want to thank you. Colby Tatusis recently served four years as counselor on the Powellmaker Cree Nation, which he says was quite the experience. We sat down with Colby, who is also on the cover of the newest issue of Res X magazine. since I've known him and I've always done my best to encourage him and to support him and to be asked to be on the last cover I think is a huge privilege. The decision to accept the nomination for council was a decision of a lifetime. The reason why that is is because the experience has been priceless, it's been profound, it's been nutrients for my soul and my character. And it's not something that I pursued. I never pursued to, to be in politics. It's just something that has gradually unfolded. The quick story of it is I went to listen to the nominations four years ago. And I was standing in the back of the hall and two young women came and asked me with tears in their eyes, can, can you run for, for your uh, council? We're gonna nominate you for council. And growing up, one of the things my late dad shared with me was when somebody asks you to step up like that, you, you don't say no. It's not something that you're supposed to refuse. And so I accepted and I told him I'm not going to campaign. I'll do a nomination speech, but I'm not going to campaign. I'm going to go home and, and see how it unfolds. And they agreed. And then come time to the election day, I, I got in and got the second highest votes. And then so began the journey of being in the band office in administering that system and it has been both traumatic, it's been frustrating, it's been agonizing, but it's also been joyful as well from the learning that I've had mm. and also experiencing the ruthlessness of, of the system and the cold heartedness of, of the expectations that that system you know, throws on you or imposes on you. and. It's, it's, it's a test to my morals, it was a test to my values, it was a test to, to, who I, to who I am. And knowing who I am and where I come from, it was like testing that and trying to get me to turn my back away from what raised me. So it was, it was a fight within myself also. When I was done my four-year term. I was really debating on going back to nominations, to the nominations, to see the speeches, you know, because I had no plans for running again. I was done. I relieved of duty. I did what I did. I did all the best I can. And the night before nominations, a lady inboxed me on Facebook, and she said, if you show up at nominations tomorrow, we're going to nominate you for chief. And there's a mother's group, and we all agree that we want you to run for chief. So if you show up tomorrow, we're nominating you. And I said, well, I don't know if I want to show up tomorrow then. 
And what happened was she had this conversation. I had several other inboxes, and I, I agreed. It's like, okay, I'll go to nominations tomorrow, and but I can't guarantee anything. And uh, so I did. I showed up at nominations. None of the ladies were there who inboxed me. So I said, okay, cool. So I guess it's not meant to be. And right at the last minute, there was probably about 10 seconds of silence. Are there any more nominators? Right at the last second, the lady walks in from the hall and says, I nominate Colby Tatusas for chief. And everybody was looking around. It was like this shock and awe moment. And they asked if you accept, and I accepted. I think there's a lot, a lot of people across our lands that are really asking some questions and are paying attention. And there's also a lot of confusion in this area of our colonial relationship. Mm -hmm. And in terms, that can be in terms of treaty and in terms of, um, of who we are and, and what our governance systems are. And if, if you were to ask, you know, and somebody did ask me, well, if you're not campaigning, you're not making these promises, what are you gonna do when you get in there then? And, and because, and that goes with what people say when, like oftentimes people will, will they look at you, Marcel, or they'll look at somebody who, who has, you know, a, 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 a good character, and they see you, and they say, we need you in there. When people have said to me, we need you in there, my, res my response has been, we, no, we don't need anybody in there. We need, we need our alternative. And to, if they were to ask me, well, what are you going to do once you get in there then, if you're not campaigning? My response has been, I'm going to break the rules. Because when you break the rules, you're obstructing the system. But it's not something I can do alone. The people have to stand by a person who's willing to break the rules. And that's not something that's very common. Oftentimes, if somebody's going to break the rules, they stand alone. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, uh, I'm not speaking in terms of Palmaker, but I'm speaking in a really broad context right now. The truth is, a lot of our people are chicken shit to break the rules. But there's a small amount of people who are willing to do that. And there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. And the invitation for young people is to pay attention to that and begin to do the work inside themselves so that that fear that prevents us from breaking the rules begins to dissolve and that passion becomes revealed as that, that can guide us as a collective to do what's appropriate. Take a short break, guys. We have more Chief Cadmus right after this break. Hi, my name is Bob Friedrich. I'm the host of Cruising on 7. We take you all over Saskatchewan and show you some of the coolest of rides and some of the best car shows around. Watch Cruising on 7 on Thursdays at 7. Only on Access 7. I had a rough and unstable upbringing. You know, I think about it now and just seeing how close I came to being a statistic. Turned 19 and I came on with SEGA. Things changed dramatically for me. You know, as a human resource manager, the biggest thing that I like about it is the fact that I'm in a position now to help others succeed in the workplace. The community that I'm in, where I'm working at, and the people I work with, I wouldn't leave that for the world. How Matakia P. If you're a regular viewer of our show, you might have heard the beats of Shane Keepness, like this right here. Shane provides all of the music in our show, but what goes into making a beat? Let's go into the studio and find out. Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, I just got this new Canon Rebel T6i, so I'm just testing it out. But uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of making a uh, a reggae R&B type beat, um, so I'll kind of go through that process with the the sample, making the beat, get the 808, all the percussion, and uh, so we'll go over that real quick. Uh, it's a reggae kind of R&B sample, um, so just a simple guitar, the upstrokes, and so I might add some guitar myself, but this is the sample. 
So uh, I'm gonna add in some drums. Um, I usually like to do it on the pads. So um, I uh, plugged in the neon lights to get the spirituality flowing. I'll show you guys um, I'll show you guys uh, some close-ups of my studio after, but uh, I put in some hi-hats, so it's just pretty simple with the hi-hats, I just kind of... Then how I did that, I was just basically... So pretty straightforward with the hi-hats. Then uh, after I put in some uh, some tambourine, so just some basic stuff. Then with everything together for the percussion. So another part that uh, that's important with the B2 is I want to make sure that my 808 is uh, has a nice groove to it. It's punchy, so we'll add that in. So I want to put some 808s in here like this. And then uh, so listening in with the with the 808s or whatever and everything all combined sounds like this. So uh, another important part was I added piano to the first and second verse um, just to add some new sounds to it. So pretty simple, then I just added on to, uh, this is what it sounds like with the pianos all stacked. So another part is I did the hook, I just left, um, I took out the drums and I just left the 808s with the, and I added this part. Another cool part is from the hook to like the bridge. I usually make my bridge even more intimate so that when it introduces the verse, it kind of hits you. So uh, I did this part just kind of to introduce the second verse and then I'll let it go into the second verse. This is it. I know. Just it's... imagine we started you here working fine option. <laughs> now it's paid <laughs> off, going on to the next thing. Uh -huh. That one's a bigger one. So, yeah, you know, yes. we might need a season four, five, six payoff now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you keep acting up, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, uh -huh. Well, how did it feel back be or how did it feel to be back on the show with stuttering a bit here? You, you know it's 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 uh, it's good to be this is like work began. 
and it's just good to, to be grounded and that's what this is about. You know, a lot of my speeches during my political campaign and even to today, mm. I learned from this room right here. That's awesome. So it, it, it's good to come back and be grounded and mm -hmm. see the Resex family. Yes. Remember the roots of it. Yes. Isn't yes. it? It's such a good place to learn, though. I mean, I mean, we're sometimes the pretty faces of it. But this is a tough gig, right? And uh, to be able to say stuff. Our terribly yeah. good looks, you know. <laughs> we do as much Those as we can. The, yeah. the whole crew, and you know, you still wear your things that hide your hickey. <laughs> <laughs> so some hey, things don't yeah, change. I'm a married woman now. Oh, okay. Hickey from one man. <laughs> My snake. Oh, he's good. Kind of shapes them. Oh. Looks like end of the trail well, there. You can yeah. see his initials. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like and you? So how was the couple shows without without me standing? Well, here? it was kind of sad at first. I was kind of okay. talking to myself, <laughs> <laughs> trying to go on and ramble, but uh, it was okay. We oh. had a couple guest hosts. And okay. Yeah, but couple jokes were tough crowd. <laughs> tough crowd. <laughs> yeah, little tears. Oh. More tears are gonna be spilled since yeah. it's your your last time here. Hey. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? Maybe in the future. Yeah, maybe we'll I'll sneak you on. Maybe yeah. we'll do like a Jerry Springer one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jerry, you're <laughs> not the father. <laughs> Wrong show. <laughs> but your uncle dad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too wicked. Okay, so I need wedding advice. Okay. What is some advice you want to give me going, going into this? Well, you know, you got to not spend that 24 hours together. It's like, it's like really yep. exciting, like before. Mm -hmm. But because you're getting married at First Nations University of Canada, <laughs> yeah. pull up and go the opposite way. <laughs> no, no, because what? everybody will see you pulling up. Oh, you're trying to get me crashed. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you're staying at, yeah. I don't Ooh. do stay gets anymore, yeah. Anymore, the strippers <laughs> only. <laughs> but you know what? Enjoy the day, it goes quick. Mm. Plan it really good. So the day comes, you mm -hmm. just enjoy it. Make sure your meals and everything are prepaid, are prepared, because you know it goes quick. And on ours, we planned everything, so it mm -hmm. was good. Well, I shouldn't say we. My wife planned everything. <laughs> yeah, gotta take <laughs> all the like, credit. Good job, good job. <laughs> Who is my marrying yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, though. It's a good okay. feeling. Uh, First Nations University. Uh, it's, it's a great place, mm -hmm. great facilities. We yeah. got everything going on there, yeah. you know. So I'm really happy to be getting married there. Lots of my Resex fam will be there. And okay. You better show up or okay. else I'll get you. Well, you pick some from the dollar <laughs> store. <I'll, laughs> do you have layaway at the dollar <laughs> store? Right? Well, on, oh, the on sale. Yeah, at here the for Aaron's uh, <laughs> uh, wedding layaway. Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Cadmus, it was so ha I'm so happy to have you back on the show, and it was great to have a reunion. And we wish you the best of luck in all of your endeavors, being a leader now. And we hope to see you as a, uh, you know where Mr. Trudeau is one day. Okay. okay. Yeah. So thank well, you. Well, thank you. And yeah. always welcome me back. Mm -hmm. This is that's my comfort Hug. zone. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. And I know Indigenous people like to laugh, so in Indigenous style, we're going to end off with some funny bloopers. Check them out. Participating in any way? Uh, actually, yes, I'm security. I'm securing the perimeter. Uh, I've been appointed to Sector 7, which is on this side, one of the most dangerous sides of the powwow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at my watch telling me. Resex shoot, 6 to 10. Soup and Jay Brass, uh, duo musicians. We also had Tara. Oh, we could do it! Uh, Drew. No. Third, one, two, three. Right. Well, how much battery is that? Two bars? One bar. Okay, so I'll do this quick here. Ready. <laughs> Word of the day, Nimeati. Mm -hmm. Almost like Meati. Yeah. <laughs> Excess.